Action cameras from Kines. One, two, three. In this video, we're going to review them side by side to see whether or not they are actually useful in the context of a motor vlogging system. Hey, what's going on guys? Tarzan here. So today I have something a bit special uh, prepared for you. I personally bent through a, a tremendous amount of trouble trying to find the perfect uh, motor vlogging setup for myself. I know some of you riders are on a budget and I, above all else, I'm doing this so that you don't um, make the same mistakes that I encountered when I was purchasing these action cameras. I should say the, on that note, then uh, I'm not being paid by any, of the, uh, any one of these companies. I'm doing this uniquely for you, for the riders, uniquely for the motorcycling community. So how this is going to work, we're going to look at the uh, first, the Brave 4. This was my first mode of vlogging uh, camera, and I'm going to do some uh, footage with it uh, on my motorcycle. I will show you my mode of vlogging setup uh, for this camera uh, with my AGV Fire Race K5 helmet. And then uh, followed by that, we're going to take a look at uh, the M90 Apex Cam, which is a camera set to shoot at 4K 60 frames per second. We're going to test and see and compare with the Brave 4 as well as with the Acaso Elite V50, which probably does actually shoot at 4K 60 frames per second. So I'll say a few things first about this camera, the Brave 4, it is an amazing camera. So I was very lucky in both my choice of helmet as well as the camera that I purchased when I was doing the setup for my first moto vlogs. So how it worked with my helmet is that I had actually, um, a, my helmet has a little bit of air vents at the front, which uh, I spoke into and the Acaso Brave 4 was terrific at picking up my voice as it would leave the helmet and enter the little um, case, the, the waterproof case that it came in, and it captured the sound terrifically. So I was very lucky, I was able to, even going at somewhat high speed, 70 kilometers, 80 kilometers an hour, I was still able to speak into the helmet and the wind noise was not significant uh, when I would do so. So without further ado, let's go into it for the Brave 4. Alright Bentley, so let's start with our review of the Acaso Brave 4. I'm going to spend the most amount of time reviewing this camera simply because it's the one that I've had the longest, as you can see by the array of photos that I've recorded with it. Starting with the price, $79.99 US dollars for the current price. Uh, when I first bought it, it was a $79 Canadian and it's now $109 Canadian. It's gone up and I'm not entirely sure why. It could be that they've added more features such as the image stabilization. In terms of ranking, I would rank this uh, first place of the three cameras that we're reviewing here. Key features for this camera I would outline are the amazing lens. So uh, paying attention to the lens of the camera when you're buying an action camera is huge because a lens will allow you to ultimately capture more light and produce more crisp and better quality image. Along with the crispness is the concept of bitrate. So if you don't know what bitrate is, um, you should probably spend a couple minutes looking that up in the internet before buying your first budget camera. But quickly, which is the bitrate, is the crispness of the image. Okay, basically it is the quality per pixel or pixel area uh, of image that you, you, you take. So it's not just the resolution, the 4K, 2K uh, property that matters more when it comes to image and video quality. The image stabilization, I didn't know that this camera actually had image stabilization, I'm not sure if this is an added feature, but uh, for sure the ca camera has great ability to ward off any shaking. It's got beautiful color schemes, um, a very natural color, and I'm not entirely sure what it is about the, the camera that uh, sets it apart from the other cameras, uh, but I particularly like the color for the Brave 4. It's, I find it's very natural, particularly in the autumn where you get the yellows and the reds. It does a phenomenal job uh, pronouncing those colors. So this camera records 4K at 24 frames per second. I don't recommend it. I don't use it for my mobile vlogs. Simply, it's too choppy. 
2.7K and 4K uh, in this camera, I don't find a noticeable difference, but the 2.7K, 30 frames per second, is a usable frame rate, and it is something that I recommend. In fact, it is the best, um, in my opinion, it is the best for in-city mode of vlog recording setting for this camera. And then the 1080p is what you're looking at right now, at 60 frames per second. I recommend this if you are, let's say, moving at high speeds, if you're doing a race video, if you're at the racetrack. This is something you definitely want to have a higher frame rate to, to show all the detail at high speeds. Okay, let's uh, talk about everything I love about this camera. Okay, the fact that it's lightweight is huge. Uh, if you are a racer, if you are just commuting around the city, you don't want a big brick attached to your helmet. Simple as that, though. Affordability and best bang for buck. This is definitely the camera with the best bang for buck uh, in terms of video quality, at least. File sizes are not overly large. I like that because uh, you don't want to just constantly reformat the uh, SD card, especially if you're just a city commuter, you're just uh, using the footage to record any legal matters, any crashes, anything that might happen. You don't particularly care about motor vlogging and talking into the camera. And this is perfect for that. The accessory kit is complete. It's an added bonus. It came with an offer of uh, additional accessories from Acast, so I'm not sure if this is a promotion that they currently are offering, but they offered me additional accessories uh, when I purchased my uh, action camera for for. It's fast, it's efficient, and the glitches are fewer than all the other cameras that I've worked with. It just, it is, I don't know why. And then lastly, guys, the, the sound quality, really, it is phenomenal. It, it just captures uh, in-city background noise very well. The wind noise reduction, I don't know if it has that feature uh, built in naturally, or uh, if it just, it, for whatever reason, doesn't pick up wind noise as well. That happens to be the case, and then it captures my voice and other people's voices in, in the background terrifically. What I don't like about this camera, or we'll say what needs to be improved, are the cons of cheap construction. So if you're buying any camera like this, well, you need to be aware that this, these cameras are prone to breaking. Okay, they are constructed, the budget cameras are constructed with cheaper uh, materials. So if you are thinking about buying these, you have to take great care. Don't let them fall and don't let them succumb to pressure. Because for instance, for me, just a little bit of pressure cracked the LCD screen on my Brave 4 and I had to send mine in for replacement. The fact that it's also unable to take 4K at 60 frames per second, it might be a deal breaker for certain people. Uh, the night pictures and the dark video suffer a bit, but that's natural for all these budget cameras. If you're thinking about taking uh, any footage at night time, you're going to need to buy a GoPro. There's no port for an external mic. This is a deal breaker if you are uh, serious, thinking about doing serious mode of vlogging. Okay? You need to be able to speak even at high speeds um, and completely block out wind noise if you're doing YouTube mode of vlogs. So you're going to need to hook up the uh, audio to an external mic if, you, if you're planning to go down that route. The battery life also kind of sucks, but the solution around that is to hook up the camera to external power source. You can just do that by drilling uh, into the uh, waterproof case of the Castle Brave 4 and then just kind of connect the USB, uh, micro USB port to it. So the intending audience, let's talk about that. I would recommend this for city commuters, such as I mentioned those who are using this uniquely for legal matters pretty much. And then the low speed motor vloggers, people who are just riding around 40, 50 kilometers an hour in the city. That way you're not affected too much by wind noise and you don't need an external mic. You can just speak directly into the helmet uh, and into the camera, such as I did. And now I'm gonna show you what that sounds like. I feel it for the next few days, I can tell you that. Always, always, always wear gear, man. Wear your goddamn gear, bro. I was lucky that I wore all my gear, man, and I could just get up and, you know, I was very lucky that time. Uh, my mistake was that, two mistakes. One, I used only front brakes to go on mine. Yeah, this is what it looks like motor walking at night, riding at night. While I'm while I'm riding at night, we may as well talk about riding at night and safety. Lastly, Belly, I would recommend this for sport bike riders who just want a spare camera. Uh, they might want to mount it in risk, risky places, uh, like let's say on the side fairing of their motorcycle when they're on the racetrack, or they just want a spare camera to capture a different angle. Or if you're just a motor vlogger and you want a, a lightweight camera to put onto your handlebar and just speak into and get different angles, then having this as a spare camera to complement a more expensive camera is a fantastic choice and it is what I'm using my uh, Brave 4 currently for. 
All right, we're back, you guys. So the next camera I'm going to talk about is the M90 Pro. Um, this camera is one that I purchased this year, just recently. Uh, I was looking to upgrade from the Brave 4 to uh, something that's capable of shooting 4K 60 frames per second. Unfortunately, I was a bit disappointed with the results, and we're going to look into why. But one of the biggest attractive things about this camera was just, I'll, I'll open it up here, is just the sheer volume of accessories that comes with it, which redirected my focus elsewhere, we'll say. So we're looking at stick here, it comes with remote, it, it came, uh, I don't have it here, it comes with an external mic that feeds into um, this spot here. To do that, you're actually going to need to drill a hole, which I did. Ter terrible idea if you are planning on returning this, do not drill <laughs> anything into your camera, needless to say. Um, but this camera, we did not live up to my expectations and there are certain things that you'll need to do first when you set it up. So this camera, first thing you need to do is to actually factory reset the camera and format the SD card. But what you need to know is that if you're planning to capture at 60 frames per second 4K, you're going to need uh, an SD card that is at least capable of uh, recording, I believe, 90 megabits per second or re writing uh, at 90 megabits per second. So that's a super important thing. They didn't advertise that. They said that this camera was capable of HD, high quality footage, but uh, I don't see the same HD level as something, for instance, like the Acaso Brave 4, which shoots at 1080p. It's almost the same as what this shoots at uh, 4K, 2K. One thing I do like about this camera, though, is, like I said, the, aside from the accessories, is its ability to capture its slow motion and the image stabilization at slow, slow motion, 720, 1080p, is relatively good. Uh, image stabilization, guys, uh, is something very important for remote vlogging, for anything that you're moving high pace. Therefore, you definitely want uh, to consider that. So since we're running a little short on time, let's jump straight to our review of the Apex cam. Price range is 100 Canadian dollars to 110 or 60 to 70 US dollars. This is the best I could find since um, I actually had a difficult time finding this on Amazon and eBay. Could be that the uh, Apex cam M90 is either discontinued or replaced with a newer model. In terms of ranking, this is third place uh, between three cameras here. Key features, as I mentioned, the full accessories and the external mic included. Very, very high quality image stabilization. And then the lens is average. The footage is fuzzy and dull in terms of color, but it's high resolution footage and it's very smooth, especially at 4K. Lastly, it shoots at 60 frames per second, although at a slow, lower bit rate, and this is an option that cannot be changed. What I like about it, well, there is the price. Slightly cheaper than the other cameras, it comes with a nice carrying case. And then obviously I mentioned the image stabilization. What can seriously be improved, what I dislike about it, is the microphone. It is terrible. Well, it is so bad, just to give you an idea, it's so bad that I'd rather talk to a walkie-talkie hooked up to an external mic in a loud coffee shop than to use the one that the, the microphone that they provided with the package. Just doing one last sound check, one last sound check, one last sound check. Alright guys, so how is the sound? Just doing a sound check now? Another big problem with the microphone is the uh, fact that it detaches very easily. And when it does, you lose all sound. And how you notice this is you can look back at the video uh, you're recording, you're like, oh, there's no sound. And then comes a moment in the video where you nudge the camera and then the connection returns and all of a sudden you get sound back. This is what it looks like. Last big con with this uh, disadvantage with this camera is the large file size. This is a deal breaker for many people actually, because and including myself, uh, because it will take so much longer to transfer files and do post video editing and processing. Even then you're dealing with less quality, uh, high quality video, so it's not ideal in every respect. In terms of the intended audience, I could only suggest this to somebody who, for whatever reason, would really like old sounding and retro looking footage from their action cameras. Also individuals who require hyper smooth footage such as pilots flying aircrafts or mountain bikers with mountain bikes without full suspension. So that just about wraps it up for my review of the Apex cam. We're going to jump straight to some videos so you can compare. Stay tuned till the end of the video because we'll be doing the side by side comparison at the end so you can judge and see which camera is better suited for your needs. Okay. So how is 
design now, I'm just going to talk about uh, my day today, I uh, went to the office, oh my god, look at that, uh, I went to the office, um, and we're working away on uh, some projects, and Alright, so I'll spare you so you don't have to listen to that terrible sound coming from that Apex skin. Next up on our review list is the Acaso V50 Elite, coming in at a price range of 165 Canadian dollars with the $25 uh, coupon on Amazon.ca. That'd be 130 US dollars with the $10 coupon on Amazon.com. This one, which falling just short to the Brave 4, uh, lands at second place in terms of ranking. Key features, we have a few new ones this time around. One is the touch screen and the voice commands, which are not available in the other uh, cameras we reviewed. Next, and most importantly, is the 4K 60 frames per second stun resolution and bit rate. We have a full range of accessories that comes with this camera, although not as great or as extensive as the Apex Cam or the Brave 4. This camera is also capable of 2.7K uh, at 60 frames per second, and we have 1080p at 120 uh, frames per second and 240 uh, frames per second slow motion. We also have image stabilization for the vast majority of the image resolutions. The exclusion of that one being 4K 60 frames per second. So what I like about this camera, the pros would be the 4K 60 frames per second. It's exceptionally vivid and this is as close as it will get belly to uh, GoPro, the newer GoPros that is. Also like the lens, the wide lens offers more view, larger view, which is great. Although the lens is not as big as the Brave 4 and doesn't capture detail as well in my opinion. But the price is less than GoPros, but it has just about, as I mentioned, the same 4K capability, but that is again at 60 frames per second something weird comes along when you're at 30 frames per second and the video quality does suffer a bit talk about that a little bit more another good pro is the acaso customer service although this does also apply to the brave 4 so what are the drawbacks to this camera well deal breaker for myself was the sound the sound quality is horrid especially with the wind noise reduction feature turned on when it's enabled everything that comes through the camera sounds very much muffled. There's also no option for an external mic, and then the colors are also slightly stronger expressed in the blues and the greens, giving it a very cool tone. Now this can be fixed and repaired, and I'll demonstrate this in our uh, video demonstration at the end when we're comparing the various, various footage. But it takes a lot more work to do that. You have to post edit process, you have to uh, play around with the exposure settings and uh, diminish and reduce the greens and the blues, and it just is a very annoying process altogether. Speaking of annoying, the glitches in this camera uh, is also one of the biggest uh, things that deterred me and uh, caused me to return it. The camera would stall when playing back videos taken on the camera playback and then also the glitches with the HD footage taken that was something I noticed so when I would basically upload videos um, or I tried to upload videos uh, transfer them to my computer and I opened them up they wouldn't be uh, able to be read they were just not compatible because the files were being taken .mov the MOV uh, file format. And when they were rendered on the computer, the quality would be reduced. Um, so from what you're looking at right now is actually not the 4K 30 frames per second, but rather it is the compressed version after having uploaded to YouTube and then downloaded so I could just prepare something for you. Now rest assured, when we do the video comparison, I will show you the direct footage from the camera directly transferred without any editing. Uh, but that is one big con, is that it's just a pain in the Pain in the foot door, we'll say, the foot door. Another uh, really annoying thing is the flashing lights when recording. So if you are um, looking to record in public or you go anywhere to record it, you don't want people to know that you're recording them. Well, this camera gives it off by flashing a uh, blue light as it's recording. It can be helpful to let you know that it's recording, but it is also uh, it will also let others know that they're being recorded. That brings us to the intended audience. All right, pretty much the same deal, I'd say the daytime vloggers, especially for the low speed vloggers, um, because now we're talking about uh, greater ability to capture detail, right? So if you're moving super fast, um, you're gonna miss detail anyway, right? So what's the point? The 4K 60 frames per second would be an attractive option for people who already have a super performing computer. So if you are a motor vlogger on a budget, but you also have a super performing computer, then this might be the camera for you. City commuters will also find this very useful because it's still cheaper than the GoPro, although it is not by any means an inexpensive camera. Alright, so to conclude this video, I'm going to give you my opinion, and then we'll jump to the side-by-side -side comparison for the cameras. Um, so, just a disclaimer first, uh, Valley, that what I'm about to tell you right now is based on my experience, so please, I know I understand a lot of you are looking at purchasing these cameras, or maybe you've already, um, you know, if you, you've already bought them, uh, please don't get offended if I say something like this, which is that they all suck in relation to GoPro. It's the truth, Belly. I, I want to give you the unfiltered truth. Maybe this is more proof that I'm uh, not being paid by any of these companies. 
try to think long term is my first recommendation because your chances are you're going to be stuck with these cameras and they are not really that cheap uh, all in all right if you just pay maybe $200 more you can get a brand new latest edition GoPro right and the GoPro is uh, capable of doing stuff that these cameras simply cannot do such as GPS data which gives you access to speed how far you're leaning on the bike It'll make a track map for you, right, if you're doing racing or track riding in the future. The collection of these things is known as telemetry. It's very valuable, so if you, if you can imagine yourself five, ten years down the road, I know it's difficult for you, probably imagine yourself, but try it. If you think these things will be useful for you, then by all means get a GoPro, uh, especially if you're also looking to do YouTube. Now, let's say you fall into the category of just a city commuter, you just want to ride a Harley-Davidson all day in the city, that's totally cool. Then you don't need telemetry, that's for sure, okay? So, my recommendation then would be to go with the Castle Bray 4, as I mentioned. It is the best bang for buck in my opinion, but important point here is that they are not all made the same. So, do your research first, and my recommendation is, if a camera can't be returned, don't buy it. You gotta try these cameras out to see which one works for you. On that note too, resolution does not necessarily equal quality, so we discussed different factors such as the type of lens. We discussed bit rate, we discussed how the camera itself processes video. All these factors lead to the uh, quality of the video that's being recorded. So don't be fooled. Lastly, if you're following my uh, primitive setup, okay, make sure to follow it directly. So use zip ties, right? Not a adhesive mount, zip ties, because it'll transfer some of the vibration into the camera. And it'll also make sure that the air vent and the uh, case of the camera are as close as possible tied together so that your air and your voice can be picked up by the camera. Use plasticine to adjust the angle right, and hold the uh, camera case firm against the helmet. And then lastly, use dead cats. And what are dead cats? Not, not that, but these things right here. The last point is the sound, and this is probably the most important thing to consider. Nobody really cares so much about the quality of the video as much as they care about the sound. The sound is so, so, so important. So there have been recommendations from YouTubers such as Yami, for instance, to get uh, external digital audio recorders such as the Tascam. And in fact, I have a Tascam right now. I'm recording through a Tascam as per suggestion of Yami Noob. This is not a budget way to go about it, though, Belly. If you're looking to go about it through a budget way, my recommendation is to either buy an external mic and pair it with a camera that also accepts external mics. So if you're looking at the Casos, the V50 Pro, I believe, or V50X, one of those cameras uh, supports uh, external mics you can just plug them in directly or if you can't do that then look for an adapter that can go into it so if you're going with a gopro you can buy a gopro adapter right don't go the route that yami noob suggested here's the reason why and he won't tell you this in his video not connected directly to the camera you're gonna have to sync the audio in editing and this is really easy um if you've seen any of my videos it <laughs> that is not correct the reason why is because there exists this phenomenon known as audio drift and this happens when your camera records at a certain frame rate and your audio recording device records audio at a certain frame rate and no two cameras and audio recorders will have the exact same amount of frame rate so what happens is over time they come out of sync and to put them back together in sync you have to either speed up the, the camera or the audio uh, recording and this process will distort your sound and the pitch frequency right so it is terrible terrible it is a real hard time to edit and fix audio drift so if you're looking to record videos longer than five minutes going around with the task cam to record motor vlogs is a horrible idea and i'm speaking from experience here anyway Bill. We're going to jump to the side-by-side -side comparison, and this will be the end for me. Uh, I want to thank you all for watching till here. If you've made it this far in the video, then you probably are the type of viewer that I'd like to continue to have on my channel. So please subscribe, and I'll see you later. Ciao. Step three. The importance of step three, which is to make sure your, work, your uh, motorcycle is properly stored in the winter. I was uh, going to sell my old CBR 125, and uh, that was my first ever bike. I didn't know that for even those small little bikes, you need to make sure to fuel up to the top and add fuel stabilizer. I thought it was only for big motorcycles that you need to do that. 
So long behold, I tried and start it up after storing it outside too, which is another mistake. Uh, I tried to start it up and uh, I thought it was a battery issue at first, but it wouldn't start. I soon realized that it wasn't a battery problem, it was a fuel problem. The fuel had accumulated too much moisture. What happens is if you don't let the engine run after every season, right, and you don't leave fuel to the top. We're going? Oh, bro. I'll launch her up well. My car's so hot. <laughs> I'm, I'm hot, bro. <laughs> bro, let's hear it rip again.
with the hooligans again. This should be a good night, boys. Uh, one of the car shows, so uh, it's a top secret meet that we go out. It's like a midnight club, quote unquote. And um, all the cars in the city sort of meet up and we just, you know, fool around, be hooligans, rev the cars up. You know what? I got a lot more to use on the right side, on the front tire.
I think I'll do one quick lap and then uh, probably return would be a good idea. I'm running low on battery. Alright, let's go back. <laughs> 